You simply can't unsee this. It's the photo on your screen. If you haven't heard about it, we're going to cover all the details of, of what's in front of you right now. Allegedly, a photo op created concerning the phone call with President Zelensky of the Ukraine. Well, there's many elements to that story that are not what they appear. We're going to cover all of those today and end with the photo I just showed you. It's important you understand all the elements of what's happening because it could very well set the stage for what may change our immediate future. Now, before we get started, a couple of huge favors for you. First, if you haven't subscribed to Lisa, please do that. Just check below and make sure your bell is checked so you're alerted to upcoming broadcasts. You see, they don't like conservative voices, and they have a funny way of making sure they take care of that. Also, huge favor to me. I've asked this many times. Just above me, there's a link to my channel. It would mean the world to me if you could take a few seconds, click on it, and subscribe. But now let's get back to this broadcast. So we have the picture. And it goes on. I spoke with Ukrainian President Zelensky, yes, Zelensky back in the news again, to discuss our coordinated diplomatic efforts and reaffirm our support for Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. We will respond decisively, along with our allies and partner, if Russia, our partners, if Russia further invade Ukraine. Is that your story, Joe? Is that your story that you're sticking to? Because you see, a lot of information came out afterwards that was in stark opposition to that. Here on CNN Politics, Ukrainian official tells CNN Biden's call with Ukrainian president did not go well. But White House disputes account. Of course they don't. Of course they don't agree. And why? Because it was an inconvenient fact. Here, I'm going to show you how the mainstream media maneuvers. Natasha Bertrand, you see on your screen, per a senior Ukrainian official, Biden told Zelensky that a Russian invasion of Ukraine is now virtually certain and Kiev could be sacked. Prepare for impact. Well, Zelensky took exception with that, but not just more than a few hours later. There it goes. They changed their story on CNN. They shelved it. Well, we have that video for you. Don't worry. Once it's on record, it stays on record. Anonymous sources are leaking falsehoods. President Biden said that there is a st distinct possibility that the Russians could invade Ukraine in February. Oh, it appears the story changed. Why did that happen? Hmm. You know exactly why it happened. Because the war dogs are barking. Wag the dog in full effect once again. So let's get to that interview that CNN tried to make disappear. It's one of the many illusions, just like that first picture we showed you. Don't worry, we're gonna get there quickly. We have breaking news for you in our world lead. A senior Ukrainian official tells CNN that today's phone call between President Biden and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, quote, did not go well. Wait now, the White House is disputing that account, Jake Tapper, what happened? Are you not on the party line for a moment? Let's go further in that interview. Inside, President Biden, according to this official who, uh, who briefed me on the conversation, uh, saying, uh, that he told the Ukrainian leader that Ukraine would not be getting significantly more military help, that there would be no U.S. troops sent to Ukraine to defend it. We already, we already knew that, of course, but it was reiterated again uh, on this phone call. Um, also, no sophisticated weapons. So wait now. Here's what we're going to do is the U.S. government. We're not going to send you in those troops we promised. We're not going to send you in that weaponry we promised. And we told you you're going to get sacked. It's only it's imminent now. But the White House disputes the account that the phone call didn't go well. Well, Zelensky tells us in so many words exactly how the phone call went. We're going to get there. So I guess you, you understand now why you see so many in the GOP requesting the transcript. That's right. It was not so long ago when Kamala Harris... She stated, release the transcript on Trump's discussion with Zelensky. You remember the, well, obviously you do. You know your history. Trump impeached for trying to blackmail Ukraine. Hits out at Biden over Russia crisis. Well, it's okay to release his transcript, but will we ever get Biden's transcript? The GOP is allegedly demanding that this happen. Of course, we know that will result in nothing because the GOP is useless at this point. But we'll go further in the story about that phone call that did not go well, but the White House disputes that account. So we'll go into Zelensky, who rebukes Biden, saying he knows more about the threat to Ukraine than Biden does. 
one of many things he said. I don't want Ukraine to be a result between President Biden and President Putin. President Biden assured me that nothing will be decided behind Ukraine's back about the destiny and future about our country. He goes on, do we have tanks in the street? No. When you read media, you get the image that we have troops in the city, people fleeing. That's not the case, but I'm not saying escalation is excluded. Escalation already happened. Part of our country is already temporarily occupied. Zelensky on talks with Biden and Russian threat assessment. It's important that the president should know the situation from me, not intermediaries. He knows the situation from me personally. We'll have another conversation in a couple weeks. It's important not to get information based on intelligence gathering. It's important to be here. I don't think the situation is more intense than it was in 2014. Now, is that what you're hearing from the mainstream accounts? I ask you that question because it's an important one. Wag the dog, the war dog's barking. It all comes into focus. We're going to play one clip from Zelensky, and then we're going to get into, well, what U.S. officials are stating. Miley, Austin, to be more specific. But let's listen to President Zelensky one time before we do that. Questions, and we are uh, grateful to the United States for their ongoing support to our sovereignty and uh, territorial integrity. But I'm the president of Ukraine. I'm based here. And I think I know the details deeper than any other president. The question is not uh, about the U.S. president. because Well, as this article on Politico states so succinctly, why imminent well it really irked Zelensky that comment alone could have set him off but that wasn't the only comment Zelensky says Ukraine lost almost 500 billion dollars to Biden war hype we don't need this panic well you don't need to panic but Biden does need to panic he is a political disaster and when people are political disasters what would help them potentially more than anything else well war that's right Wouldn't that change the focus on all from all his failures to something completely different? Just listen to what so many, his defense secretary, let's name one. Defense secretary says conflict is not inevitable in Ukraine. We will make sure that they have the capabilities that they need to defend themselves. Article 5 is clear on this point. An attack against one NATO member is an attack against us all. And as President Biden has said, the United States holds this, holds this as a sacred obligation. And we will do right by that commitment. <clears throat> and Mr. Putin can do the right thing as well. There's no reason that this situation has to devolve into conflict. He can choose to de-escalate. He can order his troops away. He can choose dialogue and diplomacy. Whatever he decides, the United States will stand with our allies and partners. Well, those statements stand in stark opposition to the statement of conflict is not inevitable. We're going to stand with our allies. Don't you dare do anything but what we're demanding you do. You have choices you can make, and you're not making the right choices just to make sure that Putin knows what's going on. So don't try to tell me for a second, Austin, and soon what you're going to hear from Miley, that you don't want this to happen. Because what the headline says on mainstream media is different than what your words are saying. Let me give you another example of that. And we are ready, capable, and prepared to uphold our obligation under treaty to NATO. As mentioned by the Secretary, An attack against one NATO ally is an attack against all. NATO has significant military capability. NATO has approximately 130 plus brigades of maneuver forces, not including U.S. forces. 93 squadrons of high-end fighters, four carriers, many more surface combatants. The military capability of NATO is very, very significant. General Milley, that doesn't sound like someone who's trying to stand down is the administration's in some ways trying to represent and in other ways not trying to represent. Biden says he'll move troops to Eastern Europe to stop General warns of horrific outcome if Russia invades Ukraine. But yet, it's not what Zelensky says Biden stated. It's just one of the many cloak and dagger maneuvers have been going on. But there's other maneuvers. 
that no one should forget in this dispute. Biden's sanctions, plans, targets, Russian banks, companies, and imports if Ukraine is attacked. Well, that's missing the most significant sanctions. And that's the part of the story they're not telling you. Off the table for now are sanctions on oil and natural gas exports or disconnecting Russia from SWIFT, the basic infrastructure that facilitates financial transactions between banks across the world. So that means Biden standing down in some ways by removing those sanctions. So what's your bet? Does Biden want the war? Does Biden want Russia to invade? Does Biden want to support Ukraine? I'm asking you because I want to see it in the comments below. I really value your opinion. It's something you have to think about. Not too much, though. Because the reality is about as crystal clear and non-deceptive as this picture. When he spoke with Ukrainian President Zelensky. Because we can't forget that it's winter in Washington, D.C. right now. There's no leaves on the tree, as you see right there. But yet, well, I know. I won't forget this. There is much talk about a staged White House. You've seen evidence of this in multiple times, multiple places, multiple different offices, multiple different sets, and we don't forget about that, nor discount that. But in this photo, another one of those examples of what doesn't appear to be the actual Oval Office, or is it, is the question. But it's this picture, and this one that's most significant. Because if we just go in and zoom in a little bit further, you notice it's awfully green outside. Wow. Another staged photo op. But would we expect anything less from this administration? So the question reigns supreme. What is Biden's desire with this conflict? I'm showing you his actions, which speak louder than words at all times. Well, actually, his general Defense Secretary's words speak very loud because the war dogs are barking. They need conflict to distract from the absolute debacle and disaster that the Biden administration is. Well, that's Biden's opinion on the way out and how this makes him look. But before we do, Lisa wanted me to give a shout out to her sponsor and go to preparewithlisa.com. That takes you, again, preparewithlisa.com brings you to My Patriot Supply and an amazing offer right now. $50 off the four-week emergency food kit. I'll show you just below what that gets you. Four, $50 off the four-week emergency food supply kit. And then down below off the three-month emergency food supply kit, you can get $150 off. Amazing offer, amazing opportunity, amazing sponsor. And right now, with everything going on, being unprepared is a very, very short-sighted decision. So I'm going to let Biden finish it off. Again, if you haven't subscribed to Lisa, you haven't subscribed to me, you haven't gone to Restricted Republic, what are you waiting for? Because we will be the ones to continue to bring you the news that matters. It makes a difference. It makes a difference when you have references and resources and you actually work on what they're saying, not what the headlines are telling you. We love you all. Until next time, Godspeed and God bless. And Joe, can you tell us what you feel about all this? And wow, those sets, kind of embarrassing, isn't it? It strips you of your dignity, damn it. Can you imagine? Look at your child. <laughs>